In this week's update, whipsawing markets demand clarity in thinking and process, large divergences in performance, and gold still in correction mode. My name's Gary Davis. As always, this is General Advice Only. And please remember to like and subscribe to the video. All right, let's start with the market perspective. Uh, we've, we've got a market at the moment that's, that's proving to be pretty tricky to negotiate. There's a lot of whipsawing going on, both uh, at the uh, index level and also the individual stock level. To my, to my way of thinking, there are some things that we can do to avoid being whipsawed in this kind of market. One of them is to be operating in a psychological comfort zone where you don't feel compelled to react to every little up and down in the market because you've got a clear long-term plan. And if you don't have that, um, that clarity and that psychological comfort, then you're going to make bad and inconsistent decisions. It, it's almost a given. So gaining clarity around what each transaction does and different parts of your portfolio can do different things. Position sizing is just absolutely critical because if you are going to sit on a particular portion uh, of a stock then and, and get through the whipsawing, then you need to be pretty confident and pretty comfortable about what you're doing. And to me, that always comes back to position sizing, where you can hold on to something long term where you've got conviction. And then if you want to periodically have increased exposure to a particular stock, because you know the position sizing to hold on to something through thick and thin may need to be relatively modest for you. But from time to time, as price cycles allow, buying weakness and selling into strength, then you can increase that exposure um, just through a trading mechanism. But you've got to be clear about what part is what. So it's very desirable, in my view, to be able to compartmentalise one's portfolio. <clears throat> and this is something that... Um, that I'm giving a huge focus on in the Insiders Club on uh, on all this sort of process, uh, and there's a you know there's been a, an opportunity to get into the Insiders Club at um, uh, at a time when there's a lot of very exciting things happening. Um, there's also a trial in uh, Portfolio Analyst for a dollar if if you want to take a look at the process, if you want to take a look at the style of how I do things first. But I'd also add that keep an eye out this week because there's a new opportunity that I've been working on for oh, the last six to 12 months in particular. It's an area of the market that previously I tended to minimise. Um, I, I saw it as, as too volatile, too high risk in the past. But there's, it, you know, it's all in how you go about it. And there are lots of things coming together that are creating, I think, a truly amazing long-term opportunity. And so, again, it comes back to the, the how-to. How do you go about it? And there'll be more coming on that uh, this week. Um, but look, any of this can only work, whatever you do in the market, can only work successfully if you're highly targeted and highly organised. And I keep you know, thumping on about this every week and have been doing so for years because being highly targeted and organised um, just increases your chance of success enormously. So let's look at the American stocks. Uh, the S&P was down 2.7% for the week. Um, there was Thursday, Friday, there was a, a large number of stocks that were down, but they were, they were only down by fairly modest amounts. And also I noticed, particularly on Friday, the volumes dropped away quite dramatically. So, you know, I'm just not selling, I'm just not seeing the sort of selling conviction that you would normally expect to see when, when indices are rolling over. And on the other side, there have been some quite powerful moves up uh, as well. So uh, we're getting a lot of divergence in, uh, in the American market. <clears throat> and for those of you that aren't interested, don't trade in the American market, it's still important to recognize it because it sets the theme, it sets the sentiment, on a sector-by-sector -sector basis for the rest of the world. Now, the reason for the moves uh, down on uh, on Thursday on, and Friday in particular was um, the personal consumption expenditure data, which is you know one of the Fed's key data points, came in uh, hotter than expected. Uh, that brought out the 
the normal market reaction, thinking that interest rates were going to be bigger and go higher for longer, and so the market sold off. Um, but look, that can often be a one or two day situation. It doesn't necessarily create a new trend. The US dollar index uh, moved up further. So that's certainly in conjunction with the 10-year um, the yield, which uh, moved up again to uh, almost 4% now. So that's been propelling the US dollar back up off uh, that key support. Uh, the VIX um, was steady to up a little bit, 21, um, but the two-year, 10-year spread continues to widen. We're now out to negative 0.83. So the bond market is, is absolutely screaming that a recession is almost you know, a complete certainty. Uh, and yet the, um, you know, the, the way that the, the market is, um, is behaving in some respects says something different. So there's, there is a significant difference between how the equity market and the bond market is, um, is seeing things. Right, let's go and look at some key charts. We'll start with the S&P. Um, I've, I've left this here and added a few other bits to it. So this is what I said last week or the week before. The character of the S&P 500 index has changed. We, at every uh, previous peak, the sellers had overwhelmed the buyers and that happened at successively lower and lower peaks. And so we had a downtrending channel. We've now, since uh, October, um, but it wasn't really clear until we got into, um, into November, um, that we've got an uptrending channel. <clears throat> and it wasn't really confirmed until we got above the 200-day uh, moving average. We've also got the shorter two moving averages, the 20-day, which is the green line, the 50-day, which is the blue line, also turning up through the 200-day and the price completed that trifecta. So all those things uh, came together and uh, and were apparent, um, you know, probably not until the middle of January. You know, um, you could have you could have guessed at it, but down here, but it would would have just been purely a guess. So the price is now being sustained above the 200-day simple moving average. Um, we dropped out of the channel on Friday, but managed to close back. You can see it bounced. Uh, quite nicely, just tighten in there. Uh, it bounced quite nicely to uh, only finish uh, only finish slightly below that boundary, and and uh, that's really neither here nor there. Uh, and then we've also got this uh, downtrending line as well, which is likely to offer support. So we've got multiple supports in this area of this rising trend line, this declining trend line, and the 200-day moving average. So they're all sort of converging in the one area. So this is a pretty key level from an index and therefore sentiment point of view. Um, now the point about sentiment, <clears throat> as, as you know, I, I I just look at the sectors of the market that are working. I, I don't get terribly fussed what the index is doing, but positive sentiment does allow positive trends. So you've already got a positive trend. It's moving up in an individual stock but it just allows that positive trend to progress even faster. So that's the, that's the event, uh, benefit of it. It doesn't stop a positive trend from continuing, but it certainly can propel it faster. So that's the, the key message there. Let's look at some of the key spread charts to see where the, the money's going. Is the money coming back into, you know, going back into the um, more conservative parts of the market? Is it becoming more risk off? This is the NASDAQ versus the S&P, down slightly in the last couple of weeks, but look, nothing like what we saw through here. So again, the, you know, the character is, is quite different. Um, so I'm still quite comfortable that we are not getting a shift in, a dramatic shift in money flows back to the more conservative risk off parts of the market. Really, really important semiconductors versus the S&P. We've now managed to break um, above this peak now, so we've taken out a series of peaks, and you know that's that's looking really good. So that gives me a, a great deal more confidence 
um, that money flows are continuing into the more risk on areas of the market. Uh, this is 1000 growth versus 1000 value. So we've rolled over fractionally in the last uh, week or so, but again, we've got higher highs. Um, we're yet to really confirm a higher low, but it's certainly heading in the right direction. Now I want to look at a, at a couple of, a couple of um, comparison charts, and this might be a little bit busy, but I think you'll, uh, you'll get the point. So this is the, uh, the main, or not all of them, but most of the sectors in the US over the last 12 months. So clearly energy, the big outperformer, then we've got healthcare, then we've got materials and consumer staples, then finance, then technology, uh, consumer discretionary and communication services. These three are the three uh, high, uh, hot, more risk on sectors and they're, they're lagging on a 12 month basis. So no surprise there. But it gets interesting when we zero in a little bit and we look at the last three months and we start to see a very different picture. The last three months we've seen communication services, technology and uh, consumer discretionary, the three risk on sectors. Um, and yes, they're, they're falling of late, but they're still outperforming the, um, the other sectors and energy, which is, you know, the, the bigger picture real outperformer is, uh, is sitting at the bottom of, of late as it goes through a bit of a pause. So, you know, that just gives you an idea that over the last quarter, we've certainly had a shift in money flows. What I then did was to drill down and took out an industry group. So there are 11 sectors in America, and then there are something like 210 industry groups within those 11 sectors. And so I went into uh, some of these key sectors and I picked out the strongest industry group within each sector. And this is what we've got over the last um, three months. So again, for the last, um, uh, the last quarter. And in descending order, um, these are the, uh, the stronger industry groups. They're not necessarily the strongest, but they're the stronger industry groups by sector uh, picking, you know, picking the, the strongest or the stronger in each sector over the last three months. Steel, semiconductors, medical supplies, oil equipment and services, consumer finance. Then the next step is to dig down into each one of those into the hundreds of stocks that comprise each one of these uh, industry groups and find the strongest performers. And by that mechanism, you can identify, you know, what, what is working right now, because there's quite a lot of stocks that are doing extremely well. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I make, I make a lot of use of this in, um, in my member uh, services both the Insiders Club and, and Portfolio Analyst. So, you know, hopefully you, you got some, uh, some insight from that. The Aussie dollar, uh, 66.56. It's been pretty volatile of late with the US dollar, and we'll look at those currencies in a minute. Our market dropped 0.5% across the week. One would think that we might drop a bit further on Monday. The previous week it was CBA, it was a big drag on the uh, on the Aussie index. This week it was BHP, providing some of the drag. Um, it's the third consecutive weekly decline in the ASX 200, but let's face it, we've been outperforming for a considerable period of time. The headwinds around the retail market for Australia um, are, are really, really clear now. The, there are warning bells um, ringing very loudly around the retail sector. Uh, dividends are being cut uh, in, a, in many sectors. Uh, it's pretty apparent we've got banks at peak earnings. I think it's also probably likely that we're seeing the likes of BHP and Rio um, at peak earnings as well. So, you know, the Australian market has outperformed um, at the index level uh, very, very strongly for, uh, for a year or more but um, that may be coming to some sort of conclusion. All right, let's look first of all at um, the US dollar index. <clears throat> so you can see quite a strong rebound. This is on a weekly basis. So that's, that's the week. 
and um, yeah, quite strong. And we've and we've gone through this resistance level. So we were in this channel between a hundred and a half and 104 and now we've we've broken clearly above it and quite decisively so that has had the impact of um, of pushing the australian dollar down and that's we're now down below this support and resistance line again precious metals gold was lower by 30 dollars down to 1814 recalling that there's strong support around the 1800, 1810 area. Uh, we were higher in, um, in Australian dollars, um, even though the gold price dropped, the drop in the currency more than offset that. So 27.25 and 1800 remains, um, remains the key support as we'll see in just a minute. If we look at precious metal stocks on a global basis, GDXJ was, was down again. I think it was down pretty much every day last week but some Aussie gold stocks are doing quite well so um, you know we've got some good opportunities there so let's take a look at first of all the ASX 200 so you can see down a little bit but we had a, a decent day Friday there's materials so materials had um, you know had three decent successive down days around the BHP uh, report uh, energy is back to the 200 day and really is at the same level that it was at in the middle of uh, last year. So nearly nine months energy has effectively gone sideways in Australia. Uh, the finance sector also really hasn't done anything. Finance is at the same level as it was in May 2021. So almost two years the finance sector has effectively gone sideways and, uh, and healthcare is um, is now backtracking above the 200 day moving average but it's it's only a mild uptrend turning now to um to gold so this is the weekly chart this is the key support level so we're getting pretty close to it and we had a low of 1809 uh during the week so the you know this week maybe next week is pretty key for gold this is an important level here if we look at it on the daily you can see we were down uh, every day um, the gold price finished lower but we are now getting close to oversold on gold and if we look at GDXJ again I think you can see almost uh, every session I think finished lower through the week so that's the precious metals market turning to other commodities uh, copper was steady but nickel fell again um, a crude oil was uh, was also steady around 76 and a half but stocks did reverse up quite strongly on Friday on what was a negative session now I, um, I'm trying to remember here from when I looked at the charts a couple of days ago but I think crude had been a bit lower and did turn up a little on um, on Friday and that helped stocks there's the spot copper chart um, down uh, again, and there's the nickel chart. Um, so we've got we've got key support down around ten dollars. So uh, another another ten percent down to support on nickel. Closing things out. Um, I just want to repeat what I said last week because it's just such an important message. Success is always about being clear about your purpose and being highly organised and highly targeted. And you can either do the hard yards yourself, and the hard yards are considerable to do it properly. Um, this is a full-time labor of love for me. It's not hard work, I love it, but it is a full-time occupation. Or you can get someone to assist you. If you wanna try and do it halfway in the middle, just doing a bit here and there, it rarely turns out well. I've been doing this for 20 years. I've worked with thousands and thousands of traders. So I, I know what the outcomes look like. Portfolio analyst last week, um, we looked at the just the huge benefits you can gain if you can become polished at reading candlestick charts. And we do do a lot of that in um, in portfolio analyst in particular, um, but also uh, increasingly in the insiders club. Uh, and again, just just a, a bit of a shout out. Um, there'll be something coming during the week, a video that um, I think offers just an amazing opportunity 
for, uh, for the long term. You've got to approach it the right way. You've got to be structured the right way. You've got to think about risk and not just the profit potential. But if you tick those boxes, um, I just think it's a, an amazing opportunity. So look out for that during the week. There's more information on the website and uh, there's my uh, email address if anyone wanted to contact me. So that's it for this week. And um, <clears throat> I just remain really, really excited about the opportunities for 2023. Be back with you next Sunday. Cheers.